While researching an historical documentary on the Republic of Manitoba, a conspiracy was uncovered that many Portage Leprarians were reluctant to speak about. Well, I, you know, obviously I can't, I can't speak to the specifics of, of any plan or even acknowledge such a plan exists, even if it does. But the reality is that uh, it's happening anyway. We're really just here to toe the line. Suffice it to say that the Republic of Manitoba has never ceased operations. I wouldn't, I wouldn't play anything into it. Actually, yeah, I don't know if that's a good thing to really talk about anyways. You know, it's, uh, it's kind of those uh, theories that they have. Uh, I, I don't know anything about that. Uh, well, I don't really feel like I can get too far into things, but just the sort of word that goes around, you know, here and there about, uh, you know, um, In 1867, Thomas Spence had an idea. He formed the Republic of Manitoba, an independent state in the heart of Canada. History has recorded the Republic ending, but evidence has surfaced that it's still in existence today. For 150 years, the Republic has acted in secret, furthering their hidden agenda. One witness has come forward under the condition of anonymity. The, the helm of the organization, a, a group of people, they are all about, uh, they're in the military, they are in uh, communications, um, they are in the arts, they are ev absolutely every part of our society that you can picture they've managed to work their way into like an unnoticed parasite. In the late 1970s, information on the Republic started to leak out. prompting the Canadian government to produce propaganda, assuring Canadians the Republic had ended. In 1867, at Portage La Prairie, mm. Thomas Spence had an idea. He persuaded the local settlers to organize the Republic of Manitoba, with, of course, himself as president. His system of taxation brought claims from the local shoemaker McPherson that the tax money was being used to buy liquor for Spence and his friends. Dirty, rotten trick! Oh. President Spence was indignant. Treason! Arrest him! And sent his entire police force to arrest McPherson. A trial took place that night with McPherson as defendant and Spence as plaintiff. Court observer John McLean interrupted the proceedings. Who's the judge here? President Spain. What? You come out as judge and accuser, Faith? The trial, the brawl, and the Grand Republic of Manitoba all ended with President Spence's historic words. For God's sake, men, don't fire! I have a wife and family! The Republic did not end 
as the National Film Board's mocking cartoon would have us believe. Thomas Spence simply changed his tactics and went underground. Since the days of the, the mutiny at the court, when, when the original leader of our fair republic uh, was cast out by the members of the population uh, for being a swindler. But a swindler doesn't stop swindling just because they get caught. They find new ways in which to ply their trade. After founding the Grand Republic of Manitoba, Spence took his influence and dreams and became part of Louis Riel's government, where he was editor of the paper, The New Nation, promoting regional independence. has uncovered a body of evidence tracing the rise and continuing influence of Thomas Spence's Republic. Whoa, uh, infiltration. I, I don't know if I'd call it that. It was sort of like to, for them to move on, to, to move up, and I really don't want to follow this questioning in that regard. Jeannie 